darlings, and welcome to KBSI's Creature Feature. Did you have a wonderful Halloween? Boy, I sure did, and I'd like to say hello to all my new friends I saw around on Halloween night. More about that later. Tonight we have a movie about a Creature Feature host who is called upon to kill a vampire. I know that sounds like a movie about me, but I'd never kill a vampire. That would be like killing my mother. Well, of course, there are probably some son-in-laws out there thinking they could do without their blood-sucking mother-in-laws. <laughs> oh, well, welcome to Bright Night. Something moved in next door that isn't human. They did kill a girl over there. It's horrifying. It's unspeakably evil. And now, it knows that you know. Fright Night. If you love being scared, it'll be the night of your life. Rated R. Sneak preview Friday night. Check newspapers for theaters. Good evening, my darlings. Tonight's movie is a little ghostly. <laughs> it's about a young man who thinks his new neighbor is a vampire and he tries to get a creature feature host to help him kill the vampire. I wonder why they did not ask me to play the part in this movie. I can act as good as Roddy McDowell any day, don't you think? Hmm? Anyway, these mortals are in store for the wrath of a bloodsucker's toothy embrace. It's Bright Night. Traditional horror gone away. And what I wanted to do was bring back the classic horror monsters that I'd grown up with. This idea came to me and I thought, well, wouldn't it be wonderful if a horror movie fan became convinced that his next door neighbor was a vampire? <coughs> if I was that kid, what would I do? Who would I go to for help? Because nobody would believe you. Welcome to Fright Night. For real. Fright Night is both an homage to the vampire genre and also a revitalization of it. The movie is like getting on a roller coaster. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster! It's just a lot of fun. There's gonna be some fright going on tonight. Hello, Charlie. There are a number of elements to Fright Night that contributed to its success. He's a vampire. A what? But first and foremost, it's on the page. Hey, kid. I guess one of those stories, it's timeless. When Jerry's full vampire-ness was upon him, it was disturbing, it was gross. It wasn't a guy who's just pasty with a little trickle of blood. I mean, the guy was a heinous freak. When I saw the movie for the first time with an audience, they went f***ing crazy. <laughs> Say, oh my God, that's the guy from Friday Night. And they would say, do that laugh, do that laugh. And I'm like, holy shit. The heart of the show is Peter Vincent. Charlie Brewster, I presume Peter Vincent, vampire killer. Roddy was a great mentor and a great friend. He was a walking history book of film and of Hollywood. You know, a legend and an icon. Fright Night was kind of the beginning of the culmination of some of the coolest physical effects that were done in the 80s. It was so well crafted. It's a movie that still holds up. It's memorable because it has its own identity. We had this incredible playground. All we had to do was go in there and make the best munches we could, and that was absolutely fun. I missed that. And there was a lot of cocaine. <laughs> Part of the joy of this film is the 80s kitsch. You know, the big, big hair. All the young kids went crazy for this look. It very much captures that time as an era. I think Fright Night has really endured because there was something for everybody. It's terrifying, it's evocative, it's sexy. It's also led to a lot of women being madly in love with Chris Sarandon. So that was a whole different vibe. Now it wasn't just the good guy against the bad guy. Assembling that group, I had the best job in the world. 
Julie Carmen was steamy. It was very much a cat and mouse relationship, and I just loved to play with him. Very hot. Thanks. Peter, it's happening again. <gasps> Fright Night 2 is a movie that seems to live on cable. I mean, it's not out. Sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, with the distribution problems and all that. The Menendez brothers killed Fright Night Part 2, as well as their parents. You f***ing The legacy of Fright Night is fascinating. Hundreds of thousands of people over the world bringing it back year after year. It's bigger now than it was then. Collectibles, props, fan art. The remakes, the fans just won't let go. Fright Night! Good evening, Fright Night fans. No one knew that it would have this other life. Wow, I was actually a part of something pretty cool. This is the last time I'm ever, ever going to say this again. <laughs> You're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> I know most of you human creatures probably saw this movie last week. Well, we originally had a different movie scheduled for tonight. It was about Judge Douglas Ginsburg. They called it Son of Bork. <laughs> well, our programmer voted it out at the last moment. <laughs> oh, yes. But don't worry, though. It's a horror spectacle coming to the official Congress coverage station nearest you. Do you remember the most terrifying night of your life? Ah! Well, steady your nerves. Ah! You're white as a sheep. And prepare yourself for a shock. Ah! Because if you were scared before... It's not really over it. Imagine how scared you'll be now. Welcome to Fright Night. You could say that again, partner. Fright Night! Yes, Fright Night, part two. It's happening again. Such a thing simply couldn't happen twice, Charlie. Can I have a bite? It is happening again. Here come the vampires. Got off the slab at the morgue just to be here tonight. And there goes the neighborhood. I can hardly go breaking into my neighbor's apartments, accusing them of being vampires. That hurts. They'll stop at nothing to get what they came for. I'd kill for a cup of coffee. Enjoy a delicious evening of thrills and chills. Come join in the devilish doings of Fright Night Part 2 as Roddy McDowell returns to do the job he does best. I kill vampires. Fright Night Part 2. You scream your head off. <laughs> Misty Brew, where are you? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no, not this character again! Oh, he sort of reminds me of the Venus de Milo, like, not all there. I've come to take you with me, Misty. Uh, listen, crater face! You're not taking me anywhere! Your face is so soft you could not win a fight with a marshmallow! <laughs> was that you just talking, or was somebody torturing a cat? <laughs> <laughs> Words and bones may stop my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, here's the bones, and here's the board. Oh. 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 I'll nail oh. him. Hey, Mom. Hey, just checking in. What you up to? Uh... Adam Johnson. Adam? You know, Adam's missing, right? Right? Kids aren't coming to school. It happens all the time. I don't know if you're paying attention to roll call, but he's not the only one that's gone. You're nuts. This is my son, Charlie, and his girlfriend. Hi. So Jerry is our new neighbor. Hey. Hey. 
Now listen to me. We graphed up all the disappearances. That's you right there in the center next to his house. I really hate to be the one to tell you this, but that guy, your neighbor? Jerry. Yeah, he's a vampire. <laughs> that is a terrible vampire name. Okay. Jerry? I've been watching you. Your mom, but there's a kind of uh, neglect, gives off a scent. And your girl, she's ripe. It's on you to look out for them, because there are a lot of bad people out there, Charlie. What's that? I'm gonna end him or he's gonna end me. That's how it's gonna be. Charlie, he's gonna find me. I'm counting on it. You smell that? It's your fear. Well, Misty Brew nailed this nightmare, Ninpo. Maybe I'll see better tonight. Hmm. Well, are you enjoying Fright Night? Chris Sarandon sure makes a great-looking vampire. This guy, on the other hand, is not so good-looking, though. I bet it was a Fright Night for his mother when he was born. Hello everyone. My name is Jerry Dandridge and hey, I'm a visiting Jerry. professor. Hey, hey, check this out! Inspector, it's about the missing person. I know it's gonna sound crazy. It was a vampire. What if I told you we got a real-life vampire problem? Professor, fancy meeting you here. I'm so glad you could have come. Welcome to Fright Night for real. Look out! Well, things have finally slowed down for me a little, but last week was something else. Whew. With Halloween and hosting the 8 o'clock movie and my contest. And speaking of my contest, thank all of you for sending those thousands of entries. But we only had one winner, and here he is, Dean Cowell of Benton, Missouri. We had great fun on the town Halloween night. We drove around in the limo, and we did the monster mash. And here we are together, and we are leaving, and here we are coming back. <laughs> Dean bought this costume at Young House with the $100 gift certificate. Hello, Dean and Tammy. I hope you are enjoying the movie. Remember, Misty Brew loves you.
Bloody good? Mmm. Next week's movie is bloody too. We can bring him back to life. Bloody revolting! With heads chopping off, coming back to life, exploding bodies, eyes popping out? Hmm. Well, maybe it's not all that bad. That's the reanimator. Don't miss it next week on the creature feature. Count Yorga Vampire continues after these short messages. Hi, human creatures. Pick up t-shirts, posters, pins, and more at my official Misty Brew store at cafepress.com slash Misty Brew. Back to the house that screams. Wanneer het begint te schemeren, regeert angst over Walibi World. Hier is het Halloween. Maak een rit door de nachtmerrie van je leven. Van rollercoasters tot spookhuizen. Nergens ben je veilig. Vanaf zaterdag 13 oktober met 8 Fright Nights tot 10 uur avonds. Beleef het nu op FrightNights.nl Say I wanted to kill a vampire. Yeah, sorry, go on. How would I go about doing that? Well, you got fire. Beheading. Stake through the heart. Bah! Really? Get back, demons! 
Fright Night. Let's kill something. <laughs> I always cry at the end of this movie. I hate movies with sad endings. Don't you think this part of the movie should live? Especially when he's a vampire! <laughs> oh well, I have to keep telling myself it's just a movie. <laughs> I'll be alright, my darlings. Speaking of alright, next week's movie is more than just that. So I'll see you then and remember this thought. Show me a person who sings in the shower and I'll show you a bathroom door that won't lock. <laughs> see you next week, my darlings. He was. He so was, dude. What was that? Well, that's it for Fright Night, but tomorrow night is that special day for me, Halloween! My birthday, yay! <laughs> I'll see my special guest tomorrow night, and I might see you if you come out to KGMO's Halloween parties at the Blue Whale Lounge and Rumor Season Cape. Look for me and my guests tomorrow night, my darlings. I've enjoyed being on the 8 o'clock movie and spending time with you. Stay tuned for more Halloween fun with cat people on the creature feature at 11.30. See you then, my darlings. never gave vampires much thought. No, total dark and handsome. <laughs> Until he became one. Oh, wow, I love your outfits. I'm not wearing a costume. Now he's losing his girl. It's like you're not the Mark I thought I knew. You look like Jerry Lewis. His customers. Get out of here! And his mind. I don't want to be a vampire. I'm a day person. Nothing is sacred. How oh, was it? In a tasty comedy. Delicious. Once bitten, rated PG-13. Now playing at a theater near you. Hey, human creatures, come see me, Misty Prue, at Cape Comic Con on April 19th to the 21st, 2015, at the Osage Center in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. See you there. Cooper's about to walk. Now people trade in their old TVs to a Sony Slockist to get money off a new one. Doesn't throwing TVs out of the window seem a bit 80s? Yeah, the last TV I threw out was attached to a Betamax. You know, it actually started with Mozart. He threw cellos off balconies. TV was garbage in the 80s. I think that's what started it. It was so much easier back then, but they bolted him to the wall now. They didn't change the channel, they just changed the TV. See this car? TV aerial 87. I once threw out my own TV. I thought I was in a hotel room. Remote control, 94. I threw a window frame through a TV screen. It was ironic. <laughs> so no one got hit. I hired a roadie to stand under Alice's room. That's from when I was standing under Alice's room. So would you trade in your old TV to get up to 150 pounds off a new Bravo with a three-year Sony guarantee? It makes more sense than throwing it out the window. My friends like the showers better than the pool since I installed Polynex massaging showers. Each has four different shower heads. I save up to $190 on water and energy. Powerful jet massage, pulsating wide massage.
tingling fine spray, brisk core spray. The only thing I don't like about my Polynex massaging shower head, I can't get the girls out of the shower. Girls, nothing. Relax and save at True Value Service Merchandise and Eckerd's. Time was that great opportunities came to me. But first, I needed to prepare for the greatness that awaited me. So I asked and became a Freemason. The rest is history. For me, the time has passed. For you, time is. Time to prepare for greatness if it's in you. Now, you may listen to me or not, but Freemasonry has been preparing great men since our country's founding. So do you have greatness in you? Ask at askafreemason.org. A horror host is part comedian, part spooky figure, and they're a magician because they have to take these crappy movies every week and make you want to watch them. And they got to put some kind of magic into them to make you want to watch them. Horror hosts work. Oh, tell me something I don't know. Don't get smart. And just as a thing, they work. They give you context. They have always made you a little bit of humor. I hope you're all paying attention out there. That allows you to <sighs> unwind before the next scary onslaught. That's the only way to do things, group. You do something, do it. There's two different kinds of horror hosts. There's those that make fun of the movie. We'll get back to tonight's dynamite movie. Uh, dynamite? Yes, it's a real bomb. And then there are those who love the movie. Check this out! <laughs> the horror host gave the movies a name. The genre was kind of born by watching these guys. Good evening. A good ghoul evening to you. No, don't turn off that TV set. I never thought it would go past 13 weeks. I've got all these great ideas. I used them all in the first two shows. And I'm like, now what do I do? We did a lot of improv on that show. I worked very hard on the show. I show up and read. My parents would say, your son's in television. What does he do? Oh, he's in television. <laughs> I tried to make her believable not like someone in a costume. You know, when you're young, when you're impressionable, these things have a profound impact. Every city had their local people, and people loved them. It was new, it was fresh, it was original, and it was theirs. Once a week, you get to be this maniac. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> call it, call it. We thought, oh, I would love to do that. Look at him, he lives in a spooky castle. What a wonderful life he leads. I want to be that guy. Oh, there you are. It was as shabby and thrown together a project as you could imagine. But there was a real charm. <laughs> it was probably the first time in the history of television that somebody came on and was honest and said, this is probably the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's all we got tonight, so it's it. Dr. Bye-bye, whatever you are. hanging out in this spectacular haunted mine here at the MGM Grand Adventures theme park. And each Saturday, Friday, and July during my Saturday, Friday, the movie show, I'll be giving away free tickets for you to get into the spirit of things and visit the terrific attractions here at the MGM theme park. So tune in for your chance to win as I bring to you the haunting tale of dolls this Saturday night at 10 on WB33. Shh.